Today's video is taking this piece and making it look, well, better. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back. This is a Facebook Marketplace find for $100. It is a buffet, um, Ernest Hemingway by Thomasville. Someone else has already started to try to flip it and abandon ship. You can see that the wicker is spray painted gold. I will be working off someone else's work, but I'm gonna give this a completely different look. I got myself a new toy. I have wanted a sandblaster for a really long time now, so I got one on Amazon and got some 120 grit blasting medium. There are different blasting medias that you can use. This aluminum oxide is just what was suggested on Amazon to go with the purchase of my sandblaster, so that's why I went with that. It comes with an attached filter so you can filter the chunkies or hard pieces that collect together in your blast media. I just poured the aluminum oxide into the filter and tapped it to work it through the filter and did that process over and over until the gun was full. Okay, this is some plumber's tape or thread sealing tape that I am wrapping the opposite direction to tighten the air hose nozzle. To use the sandblaster, you do have to have an air compressor. Not a large one, but it doesn't work off electricity. If you wrap your plumber's tape the same direction that you're going to tighten it, it just becomes unraveled and you won't get as good of a seal. All right, with every new toy comes a learning curve. There is a gold knob on the side to adjust the amount of media that is coming out. So I had to play with that a little bit, but you can see that the sandblaster worked really well getting the gold spray paint off. But then I noticed that the dark wicker is actually white plastic underneath. So I decided to abandon ship on the sandblaster, even though I was so excited to use it and just pulled out my trusty sander and sanded the paint off. Now this is someone else's paint that they did and I can tell by the feel that it is either a clay or a chalk paint because it's very soft paint. So I'm just using some 120 grit sandpaper on my orbital sander to sand that off as much as possible. For the really detailed areas that were painted, I used a fine grade sanding sponge with my surf prep sander. After sanding, I wiped the dust away and then grabbed some wood filler to fill in a few large nicks and scratches. Once the wood filler was dry, I grabbed a 120 grit piece of sandpaper over an old sanding block and sanded it smooth. After all the sanding was done, I used a lint-free cloth to wipe away all the remaining dust. I also realized I hadn't taken the knobs off yet, so I removed those and wiped behind them. For primer today, I am using Rust-Oleum Primer in white. I do spray my primer often through my spray gun, but I have another piece that's outside my spray booth that I am working on that my gun is loaded up with. So I opted for the spray can on this piece. With the primer, I ended up doing two coats of primer and I let it set overnight. Now you can see that I didn't sand off all the old paint that the previous person did on this piece. So I have a couple tips of advice if you're working off someone else's work. Remove as much of their work as you can, especially if you are not able to identify what type of products that they used. My next tip of advice would be to definitely prime your piece, especially if there is some remaining paint or products left behind. I don't typically like working off other people's work, but sometimes I find pieces like this that I get really inspired and just want to give a whole new look. The next day I used a 220 grit sanding sponge and lightly went over the surface and wiped the remaining dust away before painting.
Okay, today I am back to using my paint sprayer. This is vintage paint in the color French linen. I'm using up the rest of it on this piece. And I'm gonna use this French linen to basically paint the wicker areas. Now, originally I was hoping to sandblast off the gold spray paint and find some beautiful natural wicker underneath, but it ended up being some kind of black plastic type stuff underneath that. So I opted to paint plan B. Sometimes you gotta change your plan on a piece as it evolves with you. Now, after the wicker was dry, I top coated it with two top coats of this spray water-based polyurethane, and I let that dry. The next day, I started with taping over the wicker areas. I am going to go with a two-tone look on this piece, and that's kind of my trick of how I spray with my gun two different shades. I spray one, I top do a couple layers of top coat to let that dry, tape it off, and then spray the next color. And I'm not gonna lie here, especially on those curved door fronts, taping off all the wicker areas actually took quite a while, but this is where I'm at before spraying my paint. The color I'm going with the body is this Serenity by Silk. It is a Dixie Belle product, and I loaded that in my spray cup, watered it down some so I got the consistency that I needed to spray it through my gun. I have used silk paint a few times on my channel. I know it's an all-in-one paint, but if you're familiar with my videos and my channel, you know that I always prime, I paint, and I top coat no matter what the paint companies claim. I guess I shouldn't say always, about 98% of the time I'm going to do all those steps. This paint sprays beautifully and with that one container I had enough to do two coats of the silk paint and then had a little bit remaining left over so I can send some touch up paint with the person who buys this piece. This color is so beautiful and calming, I can just see that sitting in a spa or a lake house, beach house, but just take a few moments here and watch the process and see this piece transform. There were a few spots that the gun wasn't able to spray the paint very well or without covering areas that I didn't want paint, so I just touched those little areas up with a small detail brush. After that, and while the Serenity Blue was still a little bit wet, I went ahead and peeled off all the tape off the wicker areas to reveal this beautiful, neutral, calming, two-tone look that I'm going with. And again, this wasn't the original idea I had for the piece, but it's, it's plan B. Sometimes you just have to let the piece tell you what it's gonna be and go with it. I let the paint set overnight and gave one last sanding with a super fine grade sanding sponge. So super fine is gonna be 400 grade or higher. Wiped the dust away with a lint-free cloth and got ready to spray my protection. I am using Veri Verithane's polyurethane. It's a water-based top coat that I prefer to use in the satin finish. And I spray it over the entire piece. I know the wicker areas already got two coats of the top coat in the spray can version of this, but I just figure extra protection mine as well. So I did three coats of poly, letting it dry a couple hours in between each coat. So a lot of the products that I use, you can get in a spray can or in a container and I spray it through my gun. I've done both methods multiple times and the spray can is great when you're in a pinch, but if you are thinking about getting a spray gun, I would definitely do it because it just sprays a lot better and comes out with a more professional look in the end. Next month, I will have a video of unboxing and setup to how to use this gun.
I let the top coat dry overnight and put the handles back on. This is kind of like an antique silver, the, these original knobs to the piece. So I decided to make the hinges look antique silver as well. So I'm using silver, silver rub and buff and I let that dry for a little while. And then I came back with some Annie Sloan wax in the color black and dabbed it on there and rubbed it in with my finger to make this also an antique silver look to match the knobs. On the inside, I should have taped off the cabinet area a little bit better. I mean, just tape it off. I didn't tape it off at all. So we're going to clean this up and I just have water in my spray bottle and I wipe up the dust from spraying first and then see what actual paint is left over inside and use that super fine grade sanding sponge once this water is dry and just lightly sanded the surface to remove any paint. Sanding, even with a super fine grade sanding sponge, leaves a little bit of mark. So to blend those in or to cover them up, I just used some Johnson's Paste Wax on the wood areas and it looked brand new after that. And this piece is done. Here is a quick reminder of our attempted flip but abandoned ship piece. And here is our after. This piece went from a hot mess express attempted flip into this beautiful blue serene, perfect for any beach house, lake house, or even a spa. I bought the piece for $100 off Facebook Marketplace, spent about $50 in supplies, and it took me six hours to flip this piece. So I'm set up to get a pretty good profit. I hope you guys enjoyed this flip as much as I did. That is all I have for you today. Until next time.